I'm thankful to the Congress President for releasing the Congress manifesto for the 2024 elections. Earlier, the draft Congress manifesto was thoroughly discussed in the Congress Working Committee. The recommendations of the members of the Congress Working Committee were taken into consideration. And with the final approval of the Congress President, some changes were made to the draft manifesto. And what we have today is the final manifesto approved by the Congress Working Committee and the Congress President. The broad theme of the manifesto is justice. Every aspect of justice has been threatened, weakened, diminished, and in some cases denied in the last 10 years, especially in the last five years. Members of the media will recall that in 2019, we had warned of what is likely to happen between 2019 and 24, should the BJP come back to power. We were not soothsayers, but we were active workers on the ground who could sense what is happening in this country. I'm sorry to report that what we had predicted in 2019 has come to pass in 2024. We had said institutions will be diminished or captured. That has happened. We had said freedom will be restricted and that has happened. We had said that the weaker sections of the people will be denied their rights and their privileges. That has happened. We had said that parliament will be diminished. That has happened. We had said that we will inexorably move towards an autocracy. We are already described as an electoral autocracy by many, many thinkers of the world. That has happened. While we are unhappy that what we had predicted has happened, we have in this manifesto suggested bold measures to reverse the damage that has happened in the last five to ten years. The overall theme of the Congress manifesto is three powerful words. Work, wealth, and welfare. I shan't take long. I'll explain each word in one sentence. Work means we must create jobs. If anybody had any doubt, read the report of the ILO that was released 10 to 15 days ago. The government came up with a lame defense through the chief economic advisor, but the defense only made it worse. The ILO report shows that unemployment has assumed monstrous proportions in this country. Yesterday, the media carried a report that 30 percent of the outgoing class in the Indian institutes of technology, the premier institutions of our country, are unemployed. They have not been placed. Jobs, jobs, jobs is a cry everywhere in India. Work encapsulates that section on work, the sections on work encapsulates what we will do to create jobs. The second is wealth. Wealth must be created 
before it is distributed. On the contrary, the five years of the Modi government shows that wages have been stagnant in this country. The average income of the bottom 50% has either remained stagnant or diminished or decreased for the bottom percentiles. We have to create wealth and that can only be created by growth. The UPA government delivered 8.5% growth in its first term, 2004 to 2009. And over a 10-year period, Dr. Manmohan Singh's government delivered 7.5% growth. Even the futile attempt by the BJP government to revise the figures made it 6.7%. But over the last 10 years, the average growth is only 58 And if you count the year that ended on 31st March, given the inflated figures, it will still be 59 The difference between 75 and 59 may appear to be trivial, 1.6%. But it's not a trivial difference. It is a difference that makes between a moderately slowing economy and a robust economy. So the second broad theme is wealth. We have to create wealth, which means we must have investment, capital investment, private investment, government investment, and foreign investment. Once we create jobs, and once we set in motion policies that will create wealth, this country will go back to the high growth path of the UPA governments. The third section, which addresses many aspects of justice, is welfare. So work, creating wealth, which results in welfare. The welfare of whom? I have always accused the BJP government, the Modi government, is a government of the rich, by the rich, and for the rich. This government is driven only by the interests of the top 1% of this country. But we have to look at the bottom 50%. The bottom of the pyramid, the bottom 50% is as important as those who are well off. And in the bottom 50%, as we go down, as we go down the ladder, the bottom 20% are extremely poor. It has been estimated that 23 crore people are still poor in this country. UPA government lifted 24 crore people out of poverty. And we promise that if the Congress or a Congress-led government comes to power in 2024, we will lift 23 crore people out of poverty in the next 10 years. That's possible. It's doable, and I conclude by saying the Congress has done it before, and we can do it again. I appeal to all of you to spread the message of this manif manifesto to the new corner of this country and ask the people to vote for the hand symbol and to vote for all our allied parties throughout this country. Thank you.